Hello and welcome to another Puppet Allowance training workshop program video. So in this video, I'd like to go over sharing some rigging tips and techniques on setting up an IKFK spine setup. Now this video is an actual recording from one of our online training workshop program with Mr. Daniel for rigging workshop 2. So sit back and enjoy this video. If you are interested in more professional training workshop, be sure to check out Puppeteer Lounge online training workshop program. Thank you and enjoy. What we want is uh, the pelvis and the chest. They have independent movement of each other. So the pelvis can move on its own and the chest can move on its own without affecting the pelvis, without affecting the chest. If you move the chest, pelvis stays in the position. You move the pelvis, chest it stays in the position. Think of it like a belly dancer or something like that, right? So okay, that's something yeah. that we want. We want the ability to twist the pelvis and also twist the chest so we can shake the chest and shake the uh, pelvis, right? So that's something yes. that we want. The other thing is we want proper FK movement. The spine needs to rotate. It needs to rotate front, uh, back, twist, all direction. It's a very flexible part of the thing. Now, like you said, uh, this part needs to be rigid. You mentioned that, right? This is true for realistic yes. character because there is a midrib. Yes. But for cartoon character, you know, have you seen Tom and Jerry or any other cartoon Disney characters like yeah, not being able to twist the chest or break the joints? Well, as animation principle goes, you know, breaking of the joint is something that is very important in animation, especially for cartoon animation, right? So we don't worry about uh, this. This is only okay. true if you're going to do realistic simulation, those kind of things. For cartoon, uh, make it as flexible as you want. So like I said, the hip and the chest, they are going to be IK because they can move independently. Everything else in between is FK, right? Okay. And this joint is going to be able to stretch, squash, so you can squash the joints as well so that you can create a volume preservation on it. And then we are also going to add some deformation controls here and there for cartoony behaviors. If you want to like twist or bend or distort the geometry, you can do that. Okay, okay. so that's something that we will take care of. Now, like I said, first thing first, our setup is going to be IK and FK. So we want to make sure that our rig can feature both of these. So I'm going to create a spine that features IK and FK, okay? okay. With the IK, yep. we will add the addition of all the squash and stretch and volume preservation, those kind of things, as well as twist and those. FK is straightforward, just to get better arc. Arc is very okay. important in animation. If you don't get beautiful arc, the posture, the silhouette doesn't look nice, right? So yep. that's why. So this is the main joint. This is the bind joint that we have. So we're going to duplicate this joint two times, one for the IK and one for the FK. We will do all the FK rigs on the FK joint. We'll do all the IK joint uh, rig on the IK joint. And then uh, figure out the way to blend them together so that the main joint follows their movement. Okay. Okay. Let's do yep. that. Okay. So first thing, today's lecture, we are going to set up just a simple blending and set up a FK setup on this. So... Let me go ahead and duplicate this joint. Like I said, how many times? Two times. Yep. So I will quickly search and replace. Oh, it's like J and T. I'm going to search and replace. I'll call it FK, okay? Okay. And the other one, I'll call it IK, keeping it very simple. There you have it. So I have the FK and I have the IK. Okay, so all you need to do now is just make sure to blend the FK and IK to the J and T zone. The easiest way to blend is creating a constraint. Okay? Okay. So this time I'm going to select IK, FK, J and T and apply a parent constraint with everything set by default. Make sure you reset it and add. So repeat the process for every other joint. You need to make sure that you do this in this order. Okay. So IK, FK, J and T. IK, FK, J and T. So this is the last joint. 
this is the second last one. What is this? This is the last one, right? So last point, uh, you don't really need to worry about it. You can keep it as it is. Okay. Okay. But uh, if you feel like it, you can also apply a constraint on that. That is no problem with this. Okay. Now the next constraint that I need to apply because we're going to create some kind of squash and stress as well, meaning we will be playing with scale, right? Yep. So the scale uh, and the stretchy effect uh, and everything, we are not going to use the actual scale of the joint, okay? Because um, in uh, animation, I I like to stay away from like scaling uh, the main root joints. Uh, what I normally do is just uh, to create the stretchiness, I translate X. Okay. Okay. And everything else, like creating the volume preservation, squats and strats, and uh, every other uh, cartoony behaviors, we'll do that with a uh, deformation control. We'll talk about that later. So for now, okay. let's just create these pattern constraint. All right. Okay. No. Now, first thing, I'm going to create a root controller. So to create the controller, the idea is to make sure that the controller is not visible in render. So that means a nerve circle or a nurse controller, any kind of controller. I also created some custom controllers that you can see uh, like this. Okay. These are all male scripted uh, controllers, custom controllers. But anyways, for this uh, tutorial, this works up. We are just going to create it, make it simple. So just a circle. Yep. Okay. So I don't like the way you know, like go ahead and snap the joints like this, the controller like this at the position and then freezing the transform. Don't do that. This way, the controller will lose its local space. Okay. Instead, okay. you need to create a group on itself, offset, and then snap the group to the joint. That way, the group will store all the transform information, including translation, rotation, if scale as well. But the controller itself is clean of transform, right? Yes. Okay. So this way, I'm going to call it, what is this? This is the spine uh, root CC for controller. And this is going to be offset for offset. Let me increase the scale of this radius. Uh, I mean, this controller. So you can do that from the nurse history. And there you have it. You now have a root controller. So if you want to make some changes here and there, you can do that by moving the vertices. Okay. So on this controller, I'm going to add an attribute. I'll call this IKBlend. And it will have a minimum of zero and a max of one. Okay? Yep. All right. So with that said, with the IKBlend that has been set, you can now go ahead and make the necessary connection. So what I'm going to do is I'll keep it simple by using a simple connection editor. Let's open up the connection editor. And I'm going to connect the IK plan attribute of the controller to the constraints IK, uh, the constraints IK width. So at the moment, okay. let's go ahead and make sure so non-cable is checked out because I've turned that on and I can simply connect it to the IK like this. Straightforward. Now, one of these uh, joints have two constraints. Can you see that? Mm. Yeah, spine one, spine one, and two and two, right? So it's not correct. We need to make sure that it's just the IK and the FK that is applying the constraint on it. So I think I made a mistake in here. I'm just going to delete that. This was done for spine two. Okay. Okay, so I'll repeat it again. Two, two. And two. So you need to be extra careful when you apply constraint. So you can see now it has just the two constraint, right? Yep. The, so this is like a silly user mistake. So this happens a lot in rigging. And this is how we learn, right? Yep. Okay. Now, what about the FK? FK is the opposite of IK. In other words, it's the reverse of IK. So what you can do is you can go to node editor and create a node called reverse editor, a reverse node. If you hit tab on a keyboard, you can type in reverse and it will create a node for you. Can you see that? Yes. Click on that. So this is the reverse node. Let's create, give it a name. I'll call this Mike. 
root reverse cube name like so. And we'll connect the input X of this reverse node with the IK plan. So what this reverse node does is whatever the input is, it is going to output the reverse, the opposite. So if it is one, it will output zero, okay? So now yes. it's pretty cool. You can connect the output X of this reverse node to the constraints FQ with, like so. There you have it. Now, when you do this, you will notice that our character can now blend from IK and FK. So for example, if I go ahead and select the root, let me go ahead and select all the IK joints and bend it in this direction. Let me select all the FK joints and bend it in the other direction. So at the moment, you can see, because the IK blend value is set to zero, it's following the FK joint. If I set it to IK, you can see that it goes towards the IK, FK, IK. Yes. And if I put it in a 50-50 value, it is going to blend between them both, right? Yes. There you have it. So now we have set it up. So if the animator wants to animate in the FK mode, they can do that. If they want to animate in the IK mode, they can do that. Pretty cool. Okay, yeah. so one more thing that we need to do here is make sure that these constraints change the interpolation from average to certis, okay? Sometime, you know, there is some flipping maybe happening. Uh, so I what I like to do is for all the constraints, I change the interpolation to certis, just okay. to be on the safe side. All right, so now that we have set it up, we can now go ahead and set up the rate for the FK joint. Let's go ahead and zero that out. So first thing, I'm going to hide the IKs for now. I'm going to hide the JNT for now. What we are seeing in the viewport is the FK joint, right? Yes. For the FK, like I said, it's as simple as creating the FK controllers. So let me go ahead and create circles. So we're going to create one, two, three, four, five, five controllers, six actually, including this one at the bottom. And simply, I'm going to group them and snap them to the respective joints. Now for the FK controllers, we want to make sure that their orientation matches that of the joint, right? So that is why yes. I select the joint, shift select the group and apply a parent constraint without maintain offset. So that way it will snap to the position of that controller at uh, that joint. And you will also notice that their orientation is going to match that of the joint. Once that is done, you can delete the constraint. This is the snapping process. So you can see this controller now, if I go ahead and increase the scale, you see its orientation exactly matches that of this joint. Is that okay. clear? Yes. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and give it a proper name. So this is the CC and this is the offset. Okay, all right. Let me go ahead and increase the scale a little bit. And all you need to do is just select the controller, shift select the join and apply the parent constraint. So this way, this controller is going to orient and translate, transform. It's the parent for this joint. pretty simple. Now let's do the okay. same thing for the rest of the joint. Now I don't want to go through the manual process of creating group. I do have a little script to help us, okay? So you can always yep. go ahead and use these simple scripts to help you. So what it does, it automatically snaps and automatically parent constraints the joint as well. See, it snapped yep. and it also parent constrained the joint, so much easier. So what I like to do is create these kind of simple scripts for repetitive tasks. So later on, when you're building a modular rig setup, you're going to set it up uh, by like just a few clicks, the rig is done. But for most of the cases, uh, simple scripts like this are very, very useful. These are like uh, essential tools, I would say, right? Yeah. All right then, so let's go ahead, select these controllers and scale them out. So I would like to change the radius on all of these to a value of 15 and put the normal X to one. There you go. And for these FK controllers, the behavior that we want on them is uh, to get a FK driven hierarchy. So what I mean by that is at the moment you can see, we don't have anything in the hierarchy, right? 
So we want yes. to make sure that this controller, that is its group node, is the child of this controller. So hit P on a keyboard to parent it, and you can see it will follow the movement. Similarly, this is going to be the child of this one. This is going to be the child of this one, and so and so forth. So just create a simple FKG and hierarchy, like so. And the last controller, I will parent it to the root controller. There you have it. So notice that we now have a FK based spine setup. So this is going to give you the best arc possible, best articulation to get the best, uh, you know, arc. In yep. other words, yep. because the IK setup that we're going to do is more or less uh, dependent on the IK system. Uh, with that, it's a little difficult to achieve beautiful arc. So if the animators needs to get a nice looking arc with a little bit of translation, stretchy, and those kind of things, you can use the FK setup. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is uh, toggle the visibility of this FK controller using the IK blend attribute. Remember that the reverse node is there, right? Go ahead and select it. What you can do is using this reverse node, output X, you can connect it to the visibility of the FK controller. There you go. So doing that, whenever the animator is in the IK mode, the FK controller turns off its visibility. Okay. Simple and uh, efficient, right? So that way the animator don't need to worry about like a clut cluttered controllers in the view. To keep it simple, keep it minimal, and also uh, make it animator friendly, right? Doing this. Yep. Okay, Daniel. Let's go ahead and set up the IK setup then. The FK is pretty much done. So I'm just going to hide the FK for now. And let's go ahead and unhide the IK joints. So for the IK joints, we are going to create, of course, an IK system. And the best IK system for a spine is a spline IK system. So let's go ahead and create a spline IK system. Create IK spline. What is what is like the main difference between between both? Like uh, I know that like, the first one is usually for arms and legs. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between those and this one? Okay, that's a nice question. So basically, what we have is, uh, let me go ahead and create a joint like this. So if I create the IK handle, so there are a couple of IK handle. We have single chain, we have rotate plane solver, right? So if yeah. I create any of these, it creates the IK handle from where you can move and articulate the joint. The joint will automatically rotate to pose to match the position of the IK handle. So this is the simplest yes. way to achieve uh, IK behavior. It's It makes the animators uh, animation process a lot more easier rather than rotating the joints individually to pose it. It's so much easier with the IK handle, right? Now, same yes. thing, if I go ahead and duplicate this and create a IK handle with a spline IK handle. Again, let me reset this tool. So you can see that it created an IK handle, but this time I cannot move this IK handle, right? See, this one I can move. This one, if I hit T on my keyboard, uh, W on my keyboard, no, it doesn't move. This is going to be moved by a curve because this curve is automatically generated when I created the spline IK handle. Okay. So selecting this curve, you can see if I go to its control vertex CVs, it has these couple of CVs. Try to move these CVs, and you can see now it articulates. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the difference. This IK handle that we have, it's being driven by the IK handle itself. And this one, it's being driven by the spline IK handle, uh, spline curve. So that is why it's called okay. a spline IK handle. And this okay. kind of IK handle is more suited for, like, if you're rigging a character's spine, uh, maybe the tail could be tentacle of an octopus, could be uh, rigging a fist maybe, right? Uh, okay. A hair of a character, that's good. This kind of setup is more useful if you're rigging like an arm, leg, maybe some mechanical robots, right? Or yep. in some cases, like uh, even like uh, the 
like maybe an arm of an alien character or something like that with some multiple limbs or stuff like that. This is fine. Okay. Okay. So that's the difference.